So this is the wallet and security panel, as we can see. And uh, yes, so I assume we have a few uh, people who are a little bit newer to the space. And um, yeah, the, the, the big topic is like um, your keys, your coins. Like, what, what does this phrase mean, and how do you how do you put it into context here? Maybe maybe Max wants to pick up on that. Well, the beauty of Bitcoin is that it enables individuals to to receive, to hold, and to spend money without asking the permission of the trusted third party. Uh, but that but that security model only works uh, if if you're actually the one who who knows the secrets. Uh, the private keys that uh, allow you to to spend those bitcoin uh, so ultimately uh, when we're talking of, about bitcoin someone knows the secrets someone has the private keys and either it's you or it's not you and if it's not you then a trusted third party is taking care of your bitcoin and that trust is in the past usually been broken uh, numerous times and quite grievously uh, so ultimately bitcoin cannot protect you if you misuse it uh, in a way that that it is not designed to and uh, the, the goal of Bitcoin is to, to decentralize and to distribute the trust across multiple merchants, verifying consensus rules, across multiple miners ordering transactions, and of course, uh, across multiple users, uh, protecting their own wealth with their own keys. Uh, and if you want to use Bitcoin to its fullest, then you've got to hold your own keys. Exactly. So as we are all like working in this wallet space, like when you look back at the first time you interact with Bitcoin or very early on, like what led you to be, to focus on on wallet and security and custody and uh, what was so intriguing about the private keys that you didn't run off on and created a mining company or, or became a miner or something else um maybe douglas um you have an interesting background you know, from the uh, eth uh, actually and how did you get into bitcoin and why did you focus on the private key aspects yeah um yeah, just to be clear, ETH in this sense means the university and uh, <laughs> national university in Switzerland. <laughs> this was my trap for you. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. I sometimes get invited to conferences based off of that in my CV. Uh, and then, yeah, people kind of get a little disappointed when they hear it's a university. Um, but yeah, so yeah, my background, I actually came to Switzerland, um, I'm from America originally, I came to Switzerland a long time ago um, to do science, neuroscience um, at the university here, I was doing a postdoc. And yeah, how did I get into Bitcoin? How did I leave neuroscience and get into Bitcoin? Um, I think one of the things is, you know, uh, studying the brain is, you know, I think lots of fascinating things can come from that, lots of things that can change the world. Uh, I also think the same with with Bitcoin. Uh, and so I like to work on things that can change the world. And uh, I, I feel lucky enough to you know have had a foot in, in the door in two different spaces where that can happen. Um, and yeah, when when I first heard about Bitcoin, it was probably in 2013. Um, and actually, uh, <laughs> it wasn't mining, it was probably trading <laughs> that first first piqued my interest, uh, trying to make like uh, algorithms to, you know, AI algorithms to kind of do the market and stuff in 2013. I quickly realized that, yeah, that's a full-time job if you actually want to make money. Um, but anyways, so it, that requires getting some Bitcoin and uh, having a bit of a technical background. Um, uh, for me, it was quite quite clear um, the, the security issues, like uh, just don't trust anything uh, on your computer, your mobile phone, just malware it was in the news then, as it is always. Uh, and so, you know, not your keys, not your coins. That also includes if you have... Um, coins on a software wallet, um, you know, there's malware on there that can easily take that, uh, take it away. And so, that, of course, that's why we're here, uh, a number of us making hardware wallets. Um, and at that time, you know, hardware wallets didn't really exist. Uh, there is some some news about them. Ledger and Trezor uh, were making noise, but mining, to go back to that, there was a lot of scams in, in mining at the time where you pay for hardware and you never get it. Uh, and so I just decided to make my own. Uh, it was, felt really uncomfortable uh, for a few weeks actually holding coins. Like, okay, I'm I'm going to lose it somehow. And so that was my inspiration. Like, okay, there's a big need here to make this easy for people to to be secure and feel secure. It sounds a little bit like me in, in 2017 when I uh, shot myself uh, in in a foot with a privacy coin and with the shit coin actually. And um, this was two learnings from this. Um, first of all, no more shit coins. <laughs> and the other one was like, okay, this whole 
um, space uh, needs some needs some more work, and uh, that led me to uh, um, research the space more intensively. And I ran into Stefan Snigerev, and then we um, built uh, Spectre from that. And we have a little different as um, approach. But um, first, I would like to hear from from Lichen how you sort of came into the space and and um, how how does the journey go with with Kobo and what's your background yeah. actually? I, I I don't know actually. Yeah. Actually, I first know Bitcoin back in 2009, uh, around the Christmas. I was in a like job hunting season for me. So I, I, I surf on the internet all the day. And uh, at that time, I was, using, I was using Google Reader. And my Google Reader was flooded by Bitcoin topics at that time. So it's, that, that's the first time I knew Bitcoin. And I bought my first time back in 2013. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, then my career was mostly about hardware, most about manufacturing hardware and sell hardware worldwide. And uh, back in 2017, uh, I was kind of incubated by Kobo, and Kobo mm -hmm. was founded by one of the most famous miners here in China. And we were thinking about making mining rigs, but we feel that that market was quite saturated. But for China, uh, there's strong manufacturing capab capabilities. And also I have lots of, lots of experience selling products worldwide. I think Douglas must know that it's not easy to make a hardware and also resell a hardware worldwide. A lot of like cumbersome stuff, like costumes, like everything, like almost all the censorship happens for the hardware stuff. Mm -hmm. So that's how I started. And uh, I've been working in hardware for almost 10 years. So yeah, this is mainly the story. And uh, last year, um, Kobo decided to stop the hardware product line uh, because they feel that there's very, they, they do centralized uh, wallet uh, as their main business. And they felt that there's very little synergy between the hardware business, the decentralized hardware wallet business, and their centralized wallet business. Mm -hmm. And uh, you must know the, the so-called DeFi summer last year, and they were making shit tons of money. So they decided to stop the hardware product line and try to maximize their outcome of the centralized wallet. And then I took the whole team out of Kobo, and uh, personally, I bought out all the intellectual properties of Kobo Vault. Mm -hmm. and and then we launched the new brand called Keystone this year. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So, um, with centralized um, custody, you mean like that Kobo is going more to a custody solution, um, like yes. a corporate custody yeah. solutions, and it's operating more like a Coinbase custody and something. Yes. And yes. Because, because in China, actually, I really envy the environment you are working in which is in the europe or united states people are very educated that not your keys not your coin but in china people are quite used to centralize the service i think this is also based on the political situation here so mm -hmm. people is okay with a big brother here and mm -hmm. uh, people want to just uh, maximize the convenience and they don't care too much about the the, the sovereignty and also the security so they just use a centralized service. This is the most situation here in China. And uh, even mm -hmm. we come from China and we have a strong background here in the Chinese uh, Bitcoin community. Uh, Chinese uh, hardware wallet sales only take us 5% of our all whole, like the sales. It's, it's kind of ridiculous actually. And uh, I, I think there's, there needs lots of education here in China. Wow. Okay. So yes, yeah. um, we have Spectre and simplified Chinese now. Maybe maybe that helps. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> definitely. Yeah. Exactly. But like the the mentality in China, so it's not like um, distrusting the government. Like if I like if I would be in China, like I already distrust the German government or any European mm. government. So like I just distrust government at all. So. This is yeah. was from our approach coming from from here, coming very from yeah. the do it yourself yeah. DIY uh, yeah. side, yeah. and of course we want to combine it with different other technical yeah. seed signers um, or or 
yeah. signing devices like Bitbox or Keystone. So how yeah. do you how do people think in China? Like, do they trust the bank also? I mean, with Evergrande, you now have a funny yeah. situation that things yeah. can go pretty pretty wrong with wealth yeah. wealth management projects and everything. Yeah, good good question. Actually, I feel that. Here in China, it's not like you trust or not trust the government. Here in China, the situation is like you have to trust the government. Mm -hmm. It means like from from your childhood, the education is that uh, the the Chinese government help you to help the China such a big country, like over about over one point three billion people to come to this this point of the the thing and uh, even the government feed you feed all you guys with chinese government you are going to like you're going to being hungry and uh, die of that mm -hmm. this kind of education from our childhood so it's mm -hmm. like like very few people here in china and also you know the the press here is totally centralized mm -hmm. totally controlled by the government so mm -hmm. people here very few people here crushing about whether the party, why the government is all right, or whether everything should be controlled, or whether everything should be acted like this. Mm -hmm. And also, you know that there are only, only one party here in China. So it's not like the, the societies you guys are living in. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty different here. And uh, all these things uh, comes to the point that uh, for Bitcoin, people knows people know Bitcoin here. But very few people people know about the private keys, about the wallet stuff, about the security. They just take Bitcoin as a investment thing. Mm -hmm. They think they can like make money from Bitcoin. That's mm -hmm. what they they're like thinking about the Bitcoin. It's, it's totally different from the Western markets. And uh, yeah, this is Chinese situation right now. So there's not a big narrative that with when you hold Bitcoin yourself on your private keys, on your um, 12 words or 24 words with a hardware wallet and you connect it to something like Wasabi or Spectre desktop, that you are really have something that can't be confiscated from the state. So this is like a, like a counterweight to the, to the government. So this Bitcoin only libertarian Austrian economics idea um, does not get transported into China. China with Bitcoin, mm -hmm. or not, not in the extent that we would expect it. Yeah, I think the most popular idea about Bitcoin is that mining can make a lot of money. Okay. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's the narrative here. Okay. Yeah, very interesting. So, but people have not yet been locked out in a large scale out of their um, uh, exchanges in China, which is surprising because mm -hmm. they kicked out all the miners. So the, the, the next thing up should be confiscating the custody of exchanges in China. So yes. maybe people yes. will have a hard learning here. Yes, yes, I think so. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Interesting, interesting. Yes, well, in, in Europe, I don't know, um, Max and, and Douglas, we, we get a little bit of a taste of some uh, tougher handling of uh, politics at the moment with uh, lockdowns and and stuff and this kind of stuff how how do you see it like from your perception i mean you're deep in the rabbit hole with the bitcoiner but if you take a really um sober look at the market like we have something like 100 150 kaiwa seed crypto asset users how many people are really understanding that they should move their coins to their wallet and it's not like the like an important point is here like from people who are new to the spaces so one thing is when the exchange, the cold storage of the exchange or the infrastructure is getting hacked. But the much bigger risk for a user is that um, somebody gets his username, password, and gets the 2FA and, and gets the coins through that out of the exchange. And you don't hear this too much, uh, too often, but it, it, it happens quite frequently. So um, how do you see, is there a, a, like a bigger interest in, in, in hardware wallets? and? How big do you think is the, the market actually? How many million people use hardware wallets and self-custody? Yeah, um, yeah, it's really hard to say. I, I think the the best data actually comes from Ledger. Um, mm -hmm. They recently raised a, a lot of money. Mm -hmm. uh, I think valued them at a, over a billion dollars. 
uh, maybe 1.5 billion. And um, in their press release, they said that um, they've sold to 3 million uh, wallets, 3 million customers. Um, mm -hmm. uh, quite a large number is active monthly users, um, which is a little bit scary that they track that, but anyways. Um, and uh, one number that uh, encouraged me was they said that 15% um, of the total of crypto assets are, are secured by, by Ledger wallets. Um, How and much? So I think 15, one five. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Um, that was in their press release a few months ago. Um, mm -hmm. So I think they're, they're the clear market leaders. So I think you can extrapolate some numbers uh, from there, you know, bump it up mm -hmm. a little bit for all of the other uh, hardware wallet manufacturers out there. Mm -hmm. um, but I think it's a bit promising that there's um, that much um, being stored right now. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, it's promising from a business point of view also that there's a lot of room for improvement. Uh, but I think, um, you know, just, just that fact alone would probably surprise a lot of exchanges um, that, uh, you know, we, we talked to a lot of exchanges, um, you know, they, a lot of them are like internally, they, they're interested in, um, you know, some, some of them want to have custody of coins and some of them don't want custody mm -hmm. at all. Um, because some of them make money off of assets under management, some of them don't. And for the ones that don't, it's, um, you know, it's, it's a big security expense. It's a big, mm -hmm. uh, liability, uh, you know, insurance risk, uh, things like that. So they'd be really happy if, you know, there's some kind of shared custody or, uh, you know, people actually do, do take their own coins. Um, but they're not interested in moving forward because they just think the users don't care. Um, but the ledger news, I think, is quite promising because it shows that actually there's a significant chunk of users that do care. All right. All right. Um, yeah, Max, how do you see this with uh, with the market developing? Of course, we have a lot of uneducated people coming in new who see like, OK, you can make money with mining or with, with trading DeFi uh, clown coins or whatever. Um, but in, this is the phase where a lot of noise and confusion is there, and maybe we need another bear market and uh, uh, to <laughs> to uh, to flush all this out. What well, do you think? That for sure. Uh, I miss the bear markets. Those are the best times. Um, no, but I, I actually think because we had quite a couple bear markets, and uh, during that time we could improve the the software and hardware stack tremendously. It means that the cost of using Bitcoin properly has reduced extraordinarily like the unspeakable amounts. I mean, trying to control your own keys in 2010, like good luck. <laughs> um, and, and therefore it was back in the days, I think much much more likely that a, a new market participant would uh, come into, uh, um, uh, would use yeah, you know, the easy way out with some custodial solutions. Uh, but now that we have you know, hardware wallets uh, and, and great software wallets and multi, awesome multi-sig UX and stuff like this, uh, I, I think it will get more and more approachable. Oh, and, and on top of that, not just that the software and hardware get better, but our education and our uh, skill in explaining these concepts got infinitely better too. I mean, with the number of Bitcoin podcasts and, and tutorials out there by now, uh, anyone who has somewhat of, of an interest in doing it right will figure it out. Uh, so I'm quite uh, confident. Um, of course, doesn't mean that we will get everyone uh, to use Bitcoin properly, um, but those who really need to, have all the tools and information available to to make it happen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when when you have somebody uh, who's getting interested in Bitcoin, and um, how do you show him the way as a friend or Uncle Jim, as the Americans say, to to figure the way out? Or what what is the what are the steps? Is it jump into multi multi sig or how how do how do people approach this and run their node? And what 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 would you recommend? I would actually say it at first uh, um, to jump into Lightning on a phone wallet. Uh, I think that is the you know most hands-on, real ex experience for for small explanatory mm -hmm. things. You know, um, and there you know wallets like Breeze, Moon, Phoenix, these non-custodial but highly UX optimized uh, wallets are are great for this. Mm -hmm. um, uh, especially you know because it's it's nice to start accumulating a couple a thousand or even million sats. Uh, and eventually, then you want to move on, right? You you want to upgrade, uh, and and that would naturally be you know a hardware wallet to you know um, flush out your channels and and to push mm -hmm. sats on the other side and to hold that long term in your hardware wallet, uh, and then uh, ultimately run your run your node either simultaneously with that or or after. 
Um, but I, I think that's going to be more and more of the experience. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, especially when people start to spend Bitcoin uh, regularly through Lightning, through the Lightning channels and receive it, uh, earn it. Um, I think that uh, the, the kind of um, a, a lot of things come possible just staying in the Lightning network, I think. And I, th I really think that most users uh, won't even come on chain uh, all that much. Um, mm -hmm. And um, I mean, we will see how it evolves. Yeah, I think I think that's a really great answer. I think um, for new users, of course, it's baby steps. It's a it's a whole new a whole new thing. You really have to change your mind about how you uh, kind of conceive uh, some things, um, like gone is gone and things like that. Um, and in in our experience, the biggest roadblocker, even if people do get all the news, do see the blogs, understand what they need to do, it's just a feeling of this is new and difficult, and it's hard. Um, but I think you know another thing Max said is the UX has improved tremendously over over the last decade, and I think now uh, it's actually, you know, I, I, to me I, I think it's pretty easy. Um, you know, maybe I'm biased uh, from being in the field, but I think you know once once you just get people to take that first step and try it, you know, it's mm -hmm. kind of eye opening. I think even for me in 2013, um, you know, it was a little very complicated, uh, but I, I made um, you know a purchase online. And I was just surprised how much easier it was than using a credit card. Mm -hmm. um, it, it was crazy. <laughs> it's like, okay, this this is gonna work. <laughs> and so I think you know, just getting people to kind of take that step over over their fear. Now I'm not sure exactly how how to how to get them to do that uh, without holding their hand, but I think mm -hmm. that's that's one of the key things. So education again. Yeah, but and and maybe Legion, you can explain a little bit here. Well, yeah. When like I was in El Salvador recently, and so I was like trying to share more Spanish speaking or Spanish content. Uh, and I don't know if we don't if we really have a lot of good Spanish content there. Like there's some material on the Studio Bitcoin, but how do you see it, Legion? Because like China, China, a lot of people don't speak English or don't speak so strong English. Are not so comfortable with it. Is there yeah. education material in Chinese, or is this a like? A, a, there's still a hurdle, isn't it? Mm, actually, there's very few, very very few education here in China. I can I can share an example. One of my best friend, I don't know, he he was a hodler, but one time we went to a bar and he and uh, I recommend him to use some like hardware wallets and other stuff, other more modern stuff mm -hmm. to store his bitcoin he told me that it's super hard to move my bitcoin because i need days to download the bitcoin data then mm -hmm. i realized that he was still using bitcoin call mm -hmm. to remove his bitcoin mm -hmm. and uh, yeah so it, there's very few education here and i also i want to echo what douglas just said that ux is really really important uh for the users and uh, also ux should be considered as part of the security because human error is the biggest reason is is the biggest reason for bitcoin loss so i think including me and also douglas and also wasabi also specter and also wasabi is working on a fantastic 2.0 version i think all we're doing is not only trying to give a more secure secure product to the uh, to the market but also a better ux to the user this is really important and also um uh Moritz just mentioned the localization this is also very important for the community and uh, one good thing i can see is that uh, the whole community is joining the whole localization localization thing for example for blue wallet i think they have supported over 10 languages and uh, all the work are done by the community. Mm -hmm. I think this is the most fascinating part of open source and of Bitcoin community. Mm -hmm. we, we recently rolled out uh, 11 languages and it was just done by one open source contributor and who found like 40 other guys. <laughs> and the thing was done in literally two weeks or something. It was, was really interesting to see like the dynamic and the drive behind this. Yeah, so mm -hmm. but like MZ gives a good question here. Like, so the Chinese people understand yeah. the holding of physical gold. So, how much different is it to hold it Bitcoin? And and mm -hmm. do you do you, do you have a discussion there with your 
uh, Chinese friends about this is gold and this is digital gold? Or, like, how does this 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 work in China? Mm, I think holding physical gold is not very common here. Mostly mm -hmm. for for holding gold, people take that as a souvenir. Mm -hmm. For example, my my son is one year old, and uh, my relatives, my friends, will give him some gold as a souvenir, not as a asset or something. Mm -hmm. So I think it's not comparable between gold and Bitcoin here in China. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So in your circle, like the gold store value thing is not, it's, it's more like a tradition or like a gift. It's and like, yeah, like yeah. here. So it's a little bit like from our perspective, okay, India is big and, and China is big with this. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, it's more like a souvenir actually mm -hmm. here in China. Yeah. And circling back a little bit to the new developments in the space and the improvements of, of UX. I mean, we have new companies in the space like Foundation Devices, Jade is coming, mm -hmm. Blockstream Jade is coming in, Square is making a lot of noise about making a, a new hardware wallet. Um, also, I think Cold Card is something in development. So um, I would be excited about like to hear from you guys, like what do you think like should be like the new things in, in in the UX, how to how to improve the UX. Because when I hear like when when I read the the thread of of uh, Square of Jack Dorsey, what he's talking about, like everything has to become super easy. You don't have to write down your twelve words anymore. And I think there's a certain threshold which you you cannot make it any easier than writing down twelve words and protecting a secret. So. I would ask, like, like, what do you see coming up there, and how do you look at these new competitors? Are they really bringing new approaches, or is this just uh, uh, noise? So I don't know. Mm -hmm. Actually, from from my perspective, I always have a um, logic or philosophy that I think uh, the wallet people should have multiple wallets in the future. For example, and also personally, I am not a big fan of the solution without the mnemonic phrases. Mm -hmm. And uh, but but I think that 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 is an easy way to onboard people. And maybe in the future, for example, I put my pocket money in such a ease of use wallet. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe it doesn't need. Maybe it's even seedless. But I only put only a very small amount of money into that, and I use that with lightning or something. But if I do some serious hodling, I should use a like the most uh, compatible solution, which means if the hardware wallet doesn't, if the hardware wallet broken or something happens, I can easily recover my Bitcoin with other software or hardware wallets. I think the I think uh, Max also mentioned decentralization. Uh, for, from my perspective, decentralization also means that to maximize the possibility of getting single point failure mm -hmm. uh, in your situation and trying to make your solution as compatible as possible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not, not relying on any centralized or any like a single solution to store your big chunk of assets. Indeed, indeed. Um, so, like to explain a bit uh, for the for the audience who is not familiar with this, um, the, the 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 private key can be um, displayed as twelve words or twenty four words, and these twenty four words represent a secret, which then puts together the private key again. And basically, the, it's a standard, and you can basically um, start out with a with a, a keystone and create the twelve words there. And then, if the keystone breaks or a lesion disappears, and the company disappears, you can move over to which I don't hope, and you can over move over to Bitbox and put the twelve words into the Bitbox, and then recover your funds and use the hardware wallet or better the signing device to sign transaction um, with with the Bitbox. So, um, how do you see this new entrance, Douglas? What, what do you what, what is your point of view there? Yeah, and, and vice versa. Uh, and so I agree um, with Li Jin uh, fully. I, I think that's a really great point. Um, yeah, hearing like, um, it, so some of the biggest, um, I guess, UX issues uh, that I, I think still exist is with mm -hmm. um, passwords. Uh, you know, it's not only hardware wallets, people have been um, 
complaining about passwords for decades, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, on the web, there's stuff to move away from passwords, uh, but the stuff to move away is actually kind of like a hardware wallet. It's a private key inside of a, a physical device, for example. Um, uh, and, you know, if if there's a way, I, I, I don't have answers, but if there's a way to kind of solve, solve this issue of the password and um, the other thing is the backup, um, yeah, that'd be really great. But I agree completely with, with both of you guys that you know there's there's limits, right? So um, it's it's a challenging problem. Um, like one one way we do it is we we uh, when you create the wallet with the Bitbox, it automatically saves the mnemonic, the twelve mm -hmm. words, twenty four words uh, to a micro SD card. Uh, we did that specifically with new users in mind that they wouldn't have to worry about it because I think a, a backup in that sense is a lot easier to comprehend. Uh, if it's mm -hmm. a mental model, existing mental models better. Um, but it, it's just the 24 words on an SD card as opposed to physically writing on paper. Um, and, you know, keeping some kind of compatibility is absolutely crucial because uh, if, if there's not and different manufacturers have their own custom setup, you're then locked into that uh, mm -hmm. that system, you know, and it probably, maybe there's a way out. But, uh, you know, if, if something goes wrong, you, yeah, it's, um, it's going to be painful. Yeah, um, it's, but yeah, it's, I don't, I don't have any answers. Yeah. It's a, it's a difficult part, and um, so what's always good is like you know you have this um, huge crazy Bitcoin community out there, and some guy has a like shower thought about how he can do something significantly better, and um, will share the idea, and then the idea gets refined, and um, if it's really good, it finds its way into the standards or into the production, and as it open source and uh, people are sharing the idea more freely and, and you can you can um, everybody is interested in um to improve the whole ecosystem uh, uh, simultaneously because if only you use the standard like 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 if, if we make something completely new up and nobody adopts it like we are locking our users in with this specific standard probably yeah yeah yeah, yeah. actually sorry max pretty good one. Yeah, but I again think on even on the standard sides, we're making great progress. Um, you know, HWI was was phenomenal, and then with output script descriptors, uh, you know, that's even better. Um, by the way, just a PR got open to add output script descriptors to Wasabi, uh, so that makes me very happy. Um, right. So I think we're we're going to see that much more in the future too, right? Um, and I do think there's a lot of innovation still to come. Um, you know, backups are I think still a pain in the ass, especially for Lightning Network uh, or in general. Lightning Network hardware wallet usage is, is very unexplored, uh, very interesting. Um, hardware secure modules, of course. I, I don't think there's a nice solution out there now. So uh, you know, Tropic Square or some some open source uh, uh, hardware secure modules would be awesome. Or just in general, you know, more more designs, more more experimentation. Um, if, if, and also, you know, Taproot makes multi six and uh, and all these types of things so much more interesting um and yeah i, I don't think it's going to get boring <laughs> that's that for sure that for sure and um, i have a little bit more a controversial question here is like um how much is is being bitcoin only a, a disadvantage or an advantage and the second is more i think Lishan, we discussed this year, last year on, on our, our direct chat is like how much do you need to support shit coins to build a successful hardware wallet company? And um, mm -hmm. yeah, I, like it's a it's a question I would like to, to put here out. Like like let's start with the shit coin question. Like how much shit coins do you need to sell a large amount of hardware wallets to support a company? Like what, mm -hmm. what, what do you what do you think, Lishan? And, and also Douglas, okay. what's, what's, what's your experience there? Okay, actually. Uh, I want to I want to thank Douglas first because we we learned from Bitbox that offering a Bitcoin only firmware, and uh, and the Bitcoiners really like that. I think uh, here a fundamental reason why we are offering a Bitcoin only firmware is that removing other shitcoins makes your Bitcoin safer. Mm -hmm. Because for example, there are a lot of forks of Bitcoin like like Coin and. Uh, Remaining those coins on the device may may uh, lead to some security issues. For example, the hacker may trick you into signing a Litecoin transaction, but actually you are signing a Bitcoin transaction and move your Bitcoin away. So this is very dangerous for Bitcoiners. 
I think this is the the ultimate reason why you should, if you are really serious about your Bitcoin, you should have uh, a hardware wallet which has Bitcoin only firmware. Or if you have coding capabilities, you should compile your own firmware and try to minimize the attack surfaces by moving other uh, shit coins. And uh, uh, for the second question about uh, where is the balance about uh, Bitcoin only and supporting shit coins to make money? Uh, actually, we are struggling about this too. And um, uh, one thing I can share about our strategy, about just our strategy, is that uh, we are trying to uh, we are trying to minimize our resources on shitcoin by trying to maximize the compatibility of our hardware wallet. Which means, uh, for example, we're also working on ETH, not the university of ETH, but the ETH. We're trying, <laughs> we're, we're trying to do that. We just do the signing for ETH, which means because for the signing part, it's very stable. We don't need to put too much resources into that to realize the signing work of a shitcoin. And, um, for that part, after that part, we can maximize the compatibility of our device with the QR code to interact with other software wallets. Mm -hmm. We use that strategy to minimize the effort we we were put into ETH. And then mm -hmm. also, also one one thing I want to share is that uh, you guys must must hear of MetaMask. They have mm -hmm. over fifteen million monthly they have over 10 million and close to 15 million monthly active users right now so there's a huge demand there for a hardware wallet mm -hmm. and also i want to share that for a hardware wallet company it's not like a software wallet company for a hardware wallet company the threshold of uh of taking risks is very high which means mm -hmm. uh there are lots of dependencies for making a hardware wallet everything can go wrong. For example, right now, the manufacturing is really hard to getting the chips are really hard. And uh, uh, to, to, to get the circular board is very, mm -hmm. to get the circular board is very hard. Even shipping is really hard mm -hmm. considering the, the COVID right now. Mm -hmm. So for us as a hardware water company, it's much harder for us to survive like for a software wallet because mm -hmm. uh, too much dependencies and uh, uh, for us we're trying very hard to to make money actually this mm -hmm. is a very practical issue we need to make money we need to live long enough to get the trust from the users we need to live long enough to polish our product so mm -hmm. sometimes the in the ideal situation it's always like i want to go fully on bitcoin too but that's only an ideal situation. If we can't come into realistic thing, it's very hard to balance actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is, uh, we are struggling too. And we are in a dynamic situation to like adjust our resources between Bitcoin and shit coins. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I see. Douglas, how, how do you see this? Because you, like, I think you have two versions you sell. You have the Bitcoin only version and then a version which uh, supports Ethereum and uh, Litecoin. I'm not sure. Correct me uh, yeah. on that, please. Yeah, exactly. Um, and so it, it's very similar, again, to Lucian. Uh, it sounds very, <laughs> yeah, exactly everything you say. <laughs> We're going through that also. Um, yeah, yeah it might, might be interesting to talk about uh, the whole global chip supply situation also. Um, oh, yeah. But um, yeah, for us, uh, uh, yeah, we have uh, two versions, uh, so the Bitcoin only and what we call a multi version, which has uh, an assortment of uh, altcoins, uh, mm -hmm. not a lot, but but some. Uh, and from from our point of view, um, um, yeah, Alicia said it for me, um, you know, there, there's an advantage to having the Bitcoin only. And so I think for a number of people, uh, they, they actually uh, choose to have both versions. So have a Bitcoin only version for like their their serious uh, storage, then have a multi version where they can kind of do more, um, you know, day trading or or whatever. Um, and yeah, just yeah, a little bit of um, data from us. Uh, we actually um, introduced uh, so two years ago our Bitbox O2 came out. 
Uh, and we introduced uh, during the beta program, uh, yeah, we sent beta devices, 300 people. And one of the questions was, uh, would you want a Bitcoin only device? Mm -hmm. uh, and then we got uh, about half of the people said yes. Wow. Uh, so we said, okay. okay, that's great. Um, uh, yeah, my co-founder, uh, Jonas, um, is one of the Bitcoin core people. He's been hammering <laughs> Bitcoin only, Bitcoin only, Bitcoin only. So and then we, yeah, we finally listened to him and did it. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, and interestingly enough, the sales uh, match that. So it's about 50-50 uh, what we sell mm -hmm. with uh, multi and what we sell with Bitcoin. Already. That's great. That's great yeah. to hear. Um, Alicia, how's it with you guys? Uh, you ship the, the multi-coin version and then people can oh. um, put the firmware on yeah. it, you know? Yeah, yeah. Actually, I want to explain a little bit here because uh, people are always asking me why you don't ship a uh, hardware wallet with the Bitcoin only firmware as the mm -hmm. factory firmware. Uh, I, I really, I I really respect what Big Box is doing, which is divided that into two devices. But actually, I want to explain that divided that into two devices means we need more accurate estimation for how many devices we need to manufacture mm -hmm. so it's this is a yeah that you need to do estimation yeah, yeah manufacturing product. it's very hard to do estimation here and uh, because we are uh, we are we just launched the uh, bitcoin only for less than one year so we don't have enough numbers to <clears throat> to do the estimation and you know if the device is manufactured it's super hard to change the Man, uh, the factory firmware because you need to unpack the device Don't and the burn the new firmware. Yeah, yeah, it's it's a huge, it's a big mess. That's why we don't offer a dedicated Bitcoin only device, but we let user to upgrade the firmware. Mm -hmm. And uh, actually, we don't have any numbers. We don't have any numbers about how many people are using the Bitcoin only firmware. And I'm glad to hear the numbers from Bitbox. And uh, I think that's a very good. Uh, for our next generation, I think for our next generation, we are confident to have the dedicated Bitcoin only firmware and also mm -hmm. allow people to burn their own firmware into the device. And mm -hmm. uh, thank you, Douglas, for the number you have just shared. Yeah. Yeah, sure. yeah. yeah and I yeah. think it, it also touches back a little bit on an earlier question about people uh, getting in, getting into the space. Um, you know, I think a, a number of us did get burned by altcoins that mm -hmm. may not exist anymore even. Um, but I think as we see is, uh, you know, people do get into the space, but they, as they get in the space, they learn more and more. And then I think, you know, there's probably a, a lagging, um, a lagging market for, for like Bitcoin only types of devices. But I think people do end up uh, at that point, a significant portion of people. Yeah. And uh, also another question we were asked mostly is that, can you add those uh, rich features of Bitcoin only firmware into the multi-coin multi -coin firmware. But we usually say no, that we say that if you want to maximize the security for your Bitcoin, just upgrade to Bitcoin only firmware yeah. and you can put your shit coins on other like platforms or even exchanges, it's okay. But Bitcoin requires the best security. Yep. I, I just really, I have no idea yeah how you guys do it like focusing uh on so much shitcoins like i i can barely keep up with bitcoin and how and and needing to worry about all these different stacks i just imagine this is a massive pain in the ass so so kudos to you for doing it uh but yeah I, i'm not gonna yeah and you, you yeah. need to do it like yeah. if you want to sell a lot of hardware you need to do this this That's is true it's it's like like because you get a lot of like people like i see Lee Chen, they, like when you do the multi-coin version you get a lot of shit from bitcoiners why do you do a multi-coin version and the i you know i understand the bitcoin maximalist but if you want to survive you need to do this otherwise there is basically no market and i mean other players like trezor and ledger they they go full in on that and um, yeah. i applaud like Lishan, that that you actually try to focus more on the bitcoin only version because what i see happening at, at other players especially very big players in the space is like they have a ton of engineers and not very much is happening uh, in, in in their in their bitcoin uh, functionalities yeah actually to answer max question uh we are we really love to 
one of the reasons we really love to develop Bitcoin stuff is that Bitcoin is the most standardized community among the whole world. Mm -hmm. So we have we have PSBT, we have BIP174, we have all the BIPs and all the people are aligned with those BIPs. Yeah. But in other shitcoins, people don't respect those standards. <laughs> and it, it's so a nightmare. It's a nightmare for developers, dude. You never <laughs> know. It's a nightmare. But but for one one thing is really cool is that uh for for Bitcoin, once we do BIP one seven four and once we do the signing very well, even though we were realized that uh, Blue Wallet can open a new uh lightning channel with Keystone right now. So okay. we didn't do anything for that. Just everything is standardized so they can build upon our device to do the signing and to do all the interaction. But it's a nightmare for shitcoins. Oh, nightmare. It's, it's really a nightmare. Yeah. Yeah. So I see a flipping in the hardware wallet market coming. So being very bullish as I am usually is like, I believe like if you're not putting enough resources on Bitcoin, on, on Bitcoin development, you have a massive competitive disadvantages. Maybe in the short term, you make money with supporting multi coins or shit coins or whatever, uh, but it's going to go and bite you in the butt on a level that's going to be hilarious. So I think, I don't think like the top, like Trezor and Ledger, they're going to be at the top for the next maybe four or five years. I don't, th I don't think so. I think one of the Bitcoin focused projects out there will, will really uh, pull ahead and, and the space could basically split also. I don't know. Yeah. Um, maybe yeah. Another, another thing I want to share about how, how we're wallet here is that the, the, the manufacturing cost is highly really related to how many devices you produce for mm -hmm. each batch. So if we can sell more, we can reduce the, the, the manufacturing, manufacturing cost and we can introduce the product to more people, even with a lower price. Mm -hmm. So yeah, hardware is totally different. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So we are um, approaching the end of our hour a little bit. I hope we can go to the session later, but before we close this year, I would like to ask Max, like, um, what's going on at Wasabi and, um, how do you see like other, um, privacy projects uh, playing with coin join together? Like, do you see, like, does Wasabi see competition coming from, from liquid or is this complementary? How do you, how do you see the liquid stuff is what's happening at Wasabi? Yeah, so uh, in Wasabi, we've been heads down doing research for the last couple two years to completely rework our coin join protocol. Uh, and we researched and, and designed Wabi Sabi, which uses some fancy uh, crypto magic to enable coin joins of arbitrary amounts without any input to input links, meaning you can consolidate as many coins as you want without the coordinator knowing that it's yours, as well as no output to output links. So you can generate arbitrary amount outputs as many as you want without them being linked to each other. And of course, no input to output links. Uh, so that basically means no more toxic change. Um, we just uploaded a blog post uh, where we had an example uh, coin join with 300 inputs, 404 outputs, and only two of those were unique change outputs. Uh, 402 were equal denomination with at least some anonymity set. Um, so that's that's really cool. Um, and it allows us to do a lot of really flexible things. You know, it got much more efficient. You're going to need much less block space. Uh, so from now on, we're going to have automatic coin joins by default for every user in the background, um, which is really interesting. And also privacy by default is essential. Um, and, and I hope that we're making a, a good step uh, forward to that. Um, and also to tie this into our conversation here, um, there uh, actually what uh, Stefan Snigarov from, from Spectre also uh, figured out is that doing coin joins with a offline signing device is difficult. Um, mm -hmm. because the offer signing device does not necessarily know that the other keys don't belong to him, right? Mm -hmm. um, so you need to have these non-ownership proofs. Um, and we could have implement. I think he figured that out 2019 or something, and we could have implemented that already in Wasabi 1.0, uh, but ain't nobody got time for that. Uh, so we're, we're doing it now. Um, mm -hmm. It probably won't be around in Wasabi 2.0, but maybe something like 2.1. Uh, but then we will have uh, coin joins with the private keys on a hardware wallet, uh, which is absolutely amazing. 
uh, we we will need support from from all you guys uh, to actually make that happen on the perimeter. But but I hope you got our back here. Uh, but I I just love that idea to you know have a laptop, and it's mm -hmm. always running, uh, and, and it's just finding opportunistic coin joins where where it's uh, cheap and efficient to get a lot of privacy, mm -hmm. and you have your hardware wallet plugged in. That's kind of your HSM connected to your own computer, right? And it just mm -hmm. co-signs whenever it's below the fee, uh, and and uh, you know all these conditions. Uh, I think that's going to be super interesting um, and uh, a bright future ahead. I mean, we're still building it, but we're going to have a release candidate out hopefully soon enough. Two weeks. Exactly. Not. <laughs> 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 oh, oh, yeah. By the way. And, and we're switching to Litecoin. Uh, to... <laughs> <laughs> yes. No. But by the way, I have a question I'm always curious about. Is there any story behind the name Wasabi? Um, I, I like to say that uh, when uh, Nopara uh, visited uh, Nicolas Storier in, in Japan uh, to learn how to code in C Sharp, uh, uh -huh. I, I believe he, he lived in, the, in Nicholas's apartment for a couple of months uh, just to build on N Bitcoin. Uh, and out of that kind of emerged BTC Pay Server uh, and Wasabi. Um, and I, I guess these two guys were, were getting hungry and eating sushi, uh, and you know there was wasabi and it was spicy. So right. I, I have no idea to be honest. But, but that seems <laughs> okay. That's a good story. That's a good story. All right, guys. Um, yeah, um, let's keep on rolling until um, our host kicks us out here. Um, yeah. So. What do you? Uh, no, he's no. Yes, he's coming. Hey guys, <laughs> Liam. Uh, great, great discussion. Um, yeah, it was fun. Yeah, uh, it's it's the, it's the end. It's the very final end, and I'm I'm very pleased and honored actually to have uh, yeah the champions of the of the wallet industry on here, and uh, followed followed as best as I can because um, we here as hosts, uh, to be honest, have really um exploited our energies to say the least and i'm personally really at the at the last stretch here like my neck is hurting because i was sitting here on this airbnb couch for the last 20 hours to stream <laughs> and um, hard work <laughs> and plat music is uh, is celebrating his birthday tonight um so we're kind of done and although we have uh, a great we had a great uh, extra um, planned the superb quest to launch this, but I think we're actually postponing it for the weekend. Have a little bit of time to breathe and and uh, you know find new energy and also do a little bit more promotion and marketing for us. Uh, just to spoil it quickly or tease it quickly, we have 25 million sets so far um, committed in the price fund. Also, we have fantastic hardware sponsorships by Bitbox. Uh, thank nice. you very much. Um, really great. And the goal is uh, to cater for Bitcoin adoption and awareness, obviously. I mean, it's all about awareness. And we want to uh, let the creators uh, and uh, activists and uh, journalists and whoever is a Bitcoiner and loves to, to, to do Bitcoin things related to Bitcoin, you know, maybe video or, or audio or an article or even an idea or a marketing campaign or something like the Superb Summit. All is welcome in this global contest. And we also want to implement a lightning voting system and stuff like that. Uh, and so that's the idea on the on draft, uh, basically, right now. And yeah, we invite the, the broader Bitcoin space to join us and make this happen. And hopefully the winner will take it all or will take at least a significant amount and also get support from the community itself to scale up the idea. So. Our, our agenda is to help creators and and um, uh, you know make sure that they have funding also at hand. So maybe you could be even you know give give uh, a year supply of spray cans you know to your favorite <laughs> crypto graffiti artist or whatever. Uh, very open. Um, yeah. So that so that was planned. But uh, to be honest, uh, we're done and uh, it's been such an amazing ride. I just have to take some final. Uh, closing remarks now, and then actually you can do a takeover, a tap over. I would enjoy it for uh, a, a sleep of a fairy tale, basically, to, to listen to Wasabi's next uh, generation um, <laughs> of, of hacks, basically. It's, it's really it's really fascinating. So I just go two minutes uh, through it, and then we, you, know, you can just stay on main stage, honestly. Um, I want to express my deepest gratitude um, to my fellow co-host <laughs> Pleb Music 
uh, who is on his way somewhere in Berlin to his party. Not yet, not yet. I, 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 I still wanted okay. to moderate like the end with you, but I'm uh, Perfect. Yeah, after that I'm gonna leave. But my internet is super shitty. I don't know what yeah, happened. That, that's but... another problem. Plap Music's internet just broke down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm with my phone right now and like the last one and a half hours I had to to go to my neighbors ask for the Wi-Fi it's like the total <laughs> shit hole here but <laughs> yeah thanks guys I, everything I heard from you guys was amazing and uh, yeah I also want to to just uh, say thank you to Leon you did an amazing job uh, getting all the speakers on board it I think uh, you put all your heart in there I think everybody who participated here just saw um, a lot of effort in here and hopefully we can do this next year in um, yeah in real life and we're gonna hopefully see all of you right now also the panelists there and we're gonna have some Bitcoin party and drink some beers there I'm very looking forward for that yeah people voted uh, and so far it looks like Berlin is on top which which I miss like because Berlin in my eyes is, is a shithole nevertheless it has an active you know crypto Bitcoin industry and you know a lot of Bitcoiners are there and you know it's still an awesome city in a way so why not <laughs> you could do it in Berlin um so yeah uh you know from my side it's just it's been an amazing thing um I have to uh, say thanks to so many people so first of all our sponsors uh, and supporters so special thanks to Bitcoin Reserve who allowed us to scale this um they've been great uh, thank you very, very much. And obviously, shop a bit. Um, by the way, if you don't have a T-shirt here, Max or or Moritz, um, you can get a T-shirt thanks to our sponsor, which is amazing, designed by a, a um, designer from Venezuela, uh, really great guy, uh, Volcano. And yeah, Bitbox, of course, thanks for the support uh, to Relay as well and Bitcoin21, to Mintlayer, to Crypto Processing and to Guanaja Hills Project. And of course, a big, big mega thanks to all the speakers who gave their time and invested their time. And I hope they enjoyed. Um, it means a lot to us to be able to host that many people and, you know, really the who is who and so many great minds. Uh, it's been absolutely phenomenal for us to, to enjoy this. Um, so thanks everyone who came. And finally, of course, uh, to all of you, a big, big thanks for everyone who was watching, who was joining. I mean, that's ultimately what we're after, you know, helping to spread the virus in a good way, in a positive way, to lead by example, to inspire, to ignite the fire all around the world. And without you, you know, we wouldn't be here. So thanks for everyone who got a ticket, who joined, who registered, who commented, who shared, who tweeted. Um, that's how it's done. It's a team effort. Bitcoin Superb Summit is here uh, with all of you together. Um, yeah, big, big, mega, mega thanks. Plebs together strong. We love you. I think it's time for a sailor versus Rubini. So what's the fundamental value? What's the use? What's the utility that justifies the cattle game? None is a speculative bubble that is based on pump and dump, pump and dump, pump, pump and dump. Not the means of payment, not the current, not the unit of account. Doesn't make any sense. Give me an example of something you can own a hundred million dollars of where you can take personal custody of it anywhere on earth anywhere on earth oh yeah my bitcoin uh i lost it in a boating accident pump and dump pump and dump pump and dump doesn't make any sense i lost it it's gone sorry tax that pump and dump micro 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 strategy the bitcoin like all the other shit coins are worth zero i lost it and at the end of the day, you can tell everybody to go fuck themselves. Oh, yeah, my Bitcoin, uh, I lost it in a voting accident. Pump and dump, pump and dump. I lost it, I lost it. I can't just tack Bitcoin in California. It'll move to Wyoming. Pump and dump. It'll move to Singapore. Pump and dump. It'll move to Malta. I lost it, I lost it. And at the end of the day, you can tell everybody to go fuck themselves. You can put it in your head, memorize the freaking key, right? And it's here.